There's only one piece to lead with here, and that is <laughs> the the very, very surprising kerfuffle that has hit the Microsoft Blizzard acquisition. Um, so yeah, the UK yeah. blocked it. Uh, this is super not expected. Uh, I think if you spoke to any analyst on Monday, they were like, yep, the console. So a few weeks ago, the CMA or the Consumer Markets Authority, Consumer and Markets Authority in the UK, basically cleared up their, they cleared any of their concerns regarding the console side business of mm. Xbox. And that was with, that was where all the Call of Duty stuff came in. They yeah. were like, we are happy that we think that if Microsoft acquires Activision Blizzard, they are not going to obtain a monopolistic or competitive advantage in the market to skew it their way. Yeah. And their concern at the time was cloud. And everyone at the time was like, oh, simple, cloud, not a big thing. It's mm. okay. Analysts were like, the, the um, decision is going to come in this week. That's going to be approved. And in the few weeks time, the EU is going to approve it. And that's basically going to allow Microsoft to close the deal before the July 18th deadline, even though they are fighting the American FTC in court. But, you know, if the EU and the UK are okay, the FTC will probably fold as well because they mm. don't really have a case. Turns Surprise. out the <laughs> the UK has big concerns over cloud gaming. Uh, um, and there is a bit of debate as to whether this position is like correct or not, because essentially the CMA has concerns over a market that doesn't really exist yet. They have future concerns and they're kind of basing their decision on what they think might occur. So if you look at today, Microsoft owns 60 to 70% of the console of the cloud gaming market. Mm -hmm. And that's primarily because competitors in the space have kind of disappeared. Google Stadia disappeared. Mm -hmm. Amazon Luna, not really there. And Microsoft was making all these deals, deals with these clouding, cloud providers all over Europe to kind of assuage the fears that they already have a monopoly over this, this segment. So the CMA says that Microsoft owning Activision Blizzard would give them even more power in, in uh, the space. And that the deals that they've made are not good enough. Essentially, they are too short. They have far too much wiggle room for Microsoft to still make things exclusive. And as it turns out, when the full re ruling came out, all the deals Microsoft made, they would take 100% of the profits of all of their microtransactions on those platforms, which mm -hmm. is like, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> like, yeah, of course, that's going to be a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. Like. You're basically being like, we gave this 10-year deal so they can have the game, but also we're taking we're like all the money. every single piece of money from that deal. Like, But uh, it's it's so interesting because just on that front, I'm like, if you're a cloud provider, you know, and you partner with Microsoft and they say we want 100% of profit, why would you agree to that? I mean... Because you're not going to get the game otherwise. Yeah, I, I suppose, but it's still like... I, it's, I don't know. It's bizarre. It's, I, I just... But even, yeah. You know, I can see with that context in mind why the CMA did this because they're like, we don't even have to foresee what you might do in the future. You were you're already doing, doing it. it. Yeah. You were already like, you're already overstepping the boundary, you know, to the point where the, the potential for you to go even further seems very likely. And especially mm. so when these deals are only 10 years long. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, where does Microsoft go from here? Well, they are very angry, <laughs> as expected. There is indication, well, there's suggestions from people in the Activision Microsoft camp that the CMA met with representatives from the FTC to discuss this case, which would be highly illegal. Mm. Um, so if they can prove that, that would be a big thing. I don't think they're going to try that. Um, but now they, all they can do is appeal. Mm. Now, appeals take years, firstly. So it would, their July 18th, closing date would they would definitely miss that mm. um and based on history the cma wins all appeals sure. so the odds of them overturning this very very meager i there is a suggestion from some analysts that the biggest way microsoft resolves this um is that they spin off game pass to be its own thing in the uk that doesn't have activision content and that might appease the regulators in the UK. But I mean, what happens I, to the I FTC then? Then the FTC becomes a bit of a more difficult case 
to fight in court because you don't have the pretense of like, oh, well, the UK is totally fine with that deal. It's like, no, the exactly, UK is fine yeah. with the deal because it doesn't apply to their region. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this ruling complicates so much, like, because everyone assumed this was just going to go Microsoft's way. Mm. And it... mm? no, 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 go for it. Not I'm going to say. No, I, I just. I just don't know what they really do from here because from my perspective, just understanding this, understanding this from a very basic perspective, like they can't really change their market share in the cloud space. They can't mm -hmm. really change their strategy in the cloud space. Um, so they have less than two months to try and remedy this. Mm -hmm. And depending on what the EU says, because again, everyone's saying the EU will side with Microsoft, but everyone was saying this about the fucking UK. So who the fuck knows anymore now? Yeah. Um, like if the EU rejects this, this is done. Like this is mm -hmm. so dead in the water. It's there's already indications that this might be dead because there's True. already like Phil Spencer going, Oh, we still have a plan to, you know, continue mm -hmm. Xbox without the Activision Blizzard yes. acquisition. Like Yeah, I saw that. He basically said like we have a gaming strategy that will go ahead with whether we have yeah. Active Blizzard or not. It's and it, yeah. yeah. It's just so interesting because like yeah, again, I'm I'm with you. I've I've got a very basic understanding of, you know, the legality around an acquisition of this scale. But isn't it funny that Microsoft in like trying to tick the box of no no Acti activision blizzard games will be available to as many gamers as possible like we signing all these cloud deals etc cetera, etc cetera, but it kind of backfired <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes sense it, it absolutely I, did I, not not once did it cross my mind going oh yeah they've got they've got too much dominance over cloud like i've obviously thought Microsoft's in a very good space in terms of cloud, but I never thought, yeah, they're dominating. This is a mm. problem. <laughs> what like, would have happened if Stadia was still alive? Yeah, like, that, that, that's yeah. what I was going to get to. Now, if Stadia was still in the picture, would that have changed the ruling? Because just imagine, imagine this happened two years prior, or even a year yeah. prior. It's like um, the UK are like, okay. Stadia is still like in its infancy, or it's it's around for it's been around for a bit, but Microsoft has competition. You know, mm -hmm. we'll we'll prove the deal, and then Stadia falls away, <laughs> then mm -hmm. Microsoft gets the monopoly anyway. But it's just funny that Stadia is gone now, and it's just like whoa. <laughs> and there's, Ma there's no Microsoft's real... been bitten here by being so ahead of the curve in this space. Exactly. Yeah. Like PlayStation hasn't had time to spin this up because they are going to get there. Like they yeah. definitely are thinking about the space. This is the new like battleground for for yeah. gaming, this cloud gaming. Um, and because Microsoft just has the infrastructure and like foresaw this better, they got you faster, and it's actually impacted their deal negatively because they just own most of the market because there is no competition right now. It's crazy. So I think that's where some of the the, the confusion comes in with some people when looking at this ruling because they're like. They are looking at today as a snapshot of cloud gaming and extrapolating that over the future and thinking mm. that no one else will get into the space. And maybe that's not accurate. Um, I don't know. Uh, that That's also where I've seen some people saying where Microsoft could fight this in an in a, uh, appeal is like the, the ruling today is based on a future that is being predicted off of like who knows what, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it's interesting. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's the thing that gets me is that the UK, the, the CMA was the same regu regulatory body that killed the NVIDIA arm deal. And yes, that deal was very different. That deal was from an outside perspective, far more problematic mm. in terms of monopoly because NVIDIA would essentially have everything, <laughs> the lock and keys to the designs to basically all of their competitors' hardware. Yeah. So maybe it was a bit more clear cut that, hey, maybe we shouldn't allow this, but mm. the CMA was the sticking point. When the CMA refused to budge on this, mm. uh, NVIDIA had to like pay SoftBank $2 billion in a breakup fee and just dissolve that. July 18th, if that comes... And this is not closed. Microsoft owes Activision three billion dollars, sure. and then they go back to the drawing board. Then this whole process starts again. Thanks. If they decide to continue with it, mm. so I think by July we're going to have a much better idea of whether this is even going to go forward anymore. And if you had asked me a month ago, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can go back a few episodes and you can hear me say, I'm pretty sure this deal will close. <laughs> like, 
I'm yeah, pretty sure if, you can go back on most people's yeah. gaming podcasts and they were saying the same thing. Mm. I don't know anymore. I'm more on the side of this is actually done. Like this, I think this is killed now. And it's all based on a ruling that no one expected. So I don't see Microsoft appealing this in time. Yeah. Um, so either they, thre- they pay Activision $3 billion and they continue with the appeal, which takes another two years. And mm. this thing fucking draws out for another half decade. True. Um, at which point is it even worth it? Because yeah. Microsoft is spending so much time and effort and like planning for like doing a split strategy being like, we are continuing with Xbox down this avenue, but at any point Activision could be folded in and we need to be ready for that. That's They're going to be absolutely killed by mm. Sony if they continue doing yeah. that because there's just, you can't act effectively run a business like that. No. So yeah, well, I don't know, weird. I guess we'll see, but I think let's just keep... Let's just tick this off quickly. All that said, <laughs> still on Microsoft news. Um, Microsoft Q3 2023, Windows devices and Xbox down again. They're um, struggling, yeah. But I mean, so let's just read through this quickly. Microsoft just posted the third quarter of its 2023 fiscal financial results. The software maker made $52.9 billion in revenue and a net income of 18.3. Um, I'm just looking for the key percentages here. Devices revenue has dropped by 30%. Yep. Um, overall That's gaming revenue. Xbox, yeah. Overall gaming revenue has declined by 4%. Um, and then I think there is a, another percentage. Like all that said, the actual subscription site has gone up by 3%. I just mm. cannot find that in this article. Um, but uh, a slight increase of three percent in Xbox content and service revenue. Yeah, thanks to Xbox Game Pass. Um, it's bad. Like Microsoft is in a bad, uh, or at least Xbox is in a bad position mm-hmm. right now. Like, despite Game Pass being fantastic value, the content is not there to drive further growth, and the content is definitely not there to drive device sales. Now, mm. I don't know if it, Microsoft particularly cares about device sales when their subscriptions are still there. Mm. But I would wager right now they still want to be selling Xboxes. Yeah. Um, and a 30% drop off is gigantic. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the Microsoft CEO did come out and say, we, despite the hardware dip, we set third quarter records for monthly active users and monthly active devices. Uh, Microsoft also nearly hit 1 billion in revenue from subscriptions, which is like nothing to scoff at. No, I mean, not at all. It's also, I think it's also worth remembering that I think following COVID, a lot of the numbers that were set were unusually high um like i think that's true so coming down from a, an unusually high number yeah, maybe so, looks worse than yeah it so is, you're like oh yeah. my god it's down 30 percent, but it's like yeah but <laughs> it was really hard to begin with last year the problem but, you know within that context sure you go okay maybe you know year in year bad but you know their services are still going they're still making a ton of money from from that but then you compare it to what ha- what's happening at PlayStation. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting to. So that's also, the problem. Also, news this week: a uh, PlayStation Five sales top 38 million, following its best year on the market. <laughs> also, the best selling quarter of any console in existence ever. Mm. And again, um, like um, I'm not trying to downplay this, but there's also the nuance of okay, but also stock issues are no longer a problem. Not not trying to take away from PlayStation success because it's huge. What's but the thing is, the stock issues are not a problem for Xbox either, (laughs) and they're losing sales. Yeah. So this this like Microsoft stuff with their CEO's comments in a bubble Mm. seems okay. Yeah. But then you compare it to what the direct competitor is doing, and it 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 looks bad. Like it looks really bad when PlayStation is able to say. You know, they they sold how many in the last quarter? Uh, 6.3 million um, in, in the fourth quarter and now 7.1 million in Q3. Yeah. That's a it's, lot. It's a lot. Like, they're, 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 there is no sugarcoating that they are mm. killing Xbox and devices. Mm. Like they are yeah. absolutely killing them. Um, and, you know, sure, what is Sony's... Um, services revenue what is their subscription revenue i can tell you now much lower mm. but if they ever put out a very compelling you know their their game pass esque ps plus stuff is nowhere near as compelling but like that it doesn't need to be if they've got double the amount of consoles out there selling mm. and they're selling you know they've got exclusive selling over 10 million within a couple of weeks 
Yeah. You know, it's the Nintendo model. They're making money elsewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, if this console talk has you sleeping and you couldn't give two shits about console gaming, but you want to play your PC games in the go, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The ROG, the ROG ally. ally. The Ace's so, ROG ally. So we know we've we've seen this thing before. Obviously, it's been revealed. Uh, what was it like? I don't know. It's been revealed. It's like, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Mm. And there were, there were obviously discussions of like, okay, this thing's meant to compete with the Steam Deck. However, how much will it cost? Because the Steam Deck yeah. is a very affordable piece of mobile PC hardware. Um, and I think a whole lot of previews went out this week. A lot of people giving this device, from from what I read, a lot of love. People seem to like their time with it. But again, the big question mark, what will it cost? Uh, we've had some leaks, it seems. I don't know how accurate these are, but it looks like the starting price is $700 for the AMD Z1 Extreme. Um, and for a lower end model, the AMD Z1, $600. How much is the Steam Deck, the top of the range one? Top of the range. Um, Isn't it like 450? Oh, is it 650? Okay. So it's no, slightly so cheaper. It, start, it starts at 400. Oh, okay. Um, the okay. Steam Deck. And then I think it goes to 550 and then and 650. 650. Okay. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, these, based on the internals here, so they're using AMD's new chips that are specifically designed for devices like these, these like um, mm. mobile gaming devices. They seem fast. Mm. Um, there is also a bit of, I would say, tomfoolery happening with the sort of access that people are being given to these games where mm. they aren't able to give metrics on the performance numbers they, they're seeing. Yeah. Um, but they're told these things like, it is double the performance of a Steam Deck. However, that's <laughs> caveated with the fact that it is using mm. double the power of a Steam Deck, it's using 30 watts as opposed to the maximum of 15 on a Steam Deck. So it kind of stands to reason that yes, it will perform almost mm. twice as like that. That is almost a linear comparison. Yeah. So like there is a lot of um waiting on you know reviews when this thing launches in May because they're both uh, launching in in May. Um, like how will this thing compare to a Steam Deck when it's running at 15 watts and mm. you know hopefully keeping the same battery life and when you're running it at full tilt at 30 watts mm. what is the battery life because yeah. it's all good and well if this thing fucking smokes the switch i mean uh, the, the the steam, steam deck, deck yeah but if it lasts 30 minutes that's kind of pointless yeah you know um <laughs> but so, so that, that's also hilarious in 2023 <laughs> yeah Last, like wow look how cool this is hey, let me just plug it into the ball which like, yeah exactly you know this, and you know? there's there's already this idea that this is not even a handle device because i like i watched linus tech tips who had hands on he's like he played with it in his hands it's bulky it's not that comfortable mm. when holding it up but when he put his hands on the desk he's like this almost feels designed for this to be like resting like, on the, the, the ergonomics are designed for you to have your hands on the desk and it leaning a bit tilted i'm like at the okay. at the ripe age That's of weird. 34, imagining sitting in my desk, having my arms leaning down, I just imagine the pain on my shoulders and I say, no, oh, thank you. And <laughs> looking down your neck the whole on time. On my neck. It's, yeah. This doesn't seem like a thing you're going to be holding above your face in bed. What? That said, neither is a Steam Deck. That yeah. thing is not comfortable in that, in that configuration. So I'm not going to say one is better than the other there. I do think that the price here is actually a lot better than I thought. Like 700 I think, for... Yeah. The full tilt version is where this thing needs to be if it wants to compete. Yeah, I think because everyone was expecting a like thousand, thousand dollars. So, yeah, which yeah. that in itself is my goodness. That is no, that that, that that's would that ludicrous. would kill this. That yeah. would uh, it. You know, a lot of Ioneo devices that are Steam Deck competitors are essentially that they come in and they're like, yes, we smoke the the Steam Deck on performance, but we cost three times as more. So it's like, well, then fuck off. Like, yeah, who cares, you know? Well, one um, thing I've seen in discussions around uh, the Ally is that there's an accessory that lets you hook it up to a TV. But how much does that accessory cost? <laughs> well, I mean, the Steam Deck has the same thing. They're all just USB-C docks uh, yeah, at the end of the day. But yeah, but it's like expensive. It, oh, yeah, no. Just I buy mean, a Steam... PS5 or an Xbox. <laughs> That's what you want. Valve's one is, Valve's one is like $100. <laughs> it's hectic. It's they're, not, they're not cheap. Um, no. I, I do think, though, like, this is 
for all intents and purposes, a, a just like the Steam Deck, a PC, and it's running Windows. So mm. I think more people will be attracted uh, to it to like plug it into a monitor and maybe use it as an actual PC as yeah. opposed to well, having to learn Linux. You know what I mean? I um, can tell you from my point of view is like a very layman. Hey, I love my Switch, but I wouldn't say no to a mobile PC gaming device. This is more lucrative for me purely because I can play Game Pass. On the go. Yeah, exactly. That's a big boon for people. If I yeah, can have absolutely. Steam and, and I mean, even Epic, like if I can have Game Pass, I can claim free Epic games and I can have Steam on one device, like, man, mm. that's that sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Please the, let this thing's about your life be good. <laughs> the, no, but the kicker there actually is going to be Asus's Armory software yeah. that is being overlaid on top of Windows mm. that is supposed to act as a translation layer to be like, cool, all these control inputs, how do they work on Windows? Because Windows is horrendous with that sort of control, mm. like touchscreen and, and controller support. Yeah, That is where I think the Steam Deck earns a lot of its praise is because SteamOS is so beautifully integrated into mm. Linux that like, no matter what game you're launching, no matter what you're trying to do, there is always a control scheme to get around that. It feels like a console experience. Yeah. And, you know, the Ioneos have been really bad with this, and that's why they haven't really caught on. If Aces cracks the nuts of, this feels like a Windows console experience, and then you have the access to all these mm. games, but you don't have to, like, always plug in a fucking keyboard to get it working. <laughs> they've got a winner on their hands, I think. Yeah. But until people play around with that software, I'm yeah, as, very skeptical. I was going to say, uh, I think... If, if you're looking to get this thing, hold out on your pre-order. Let's see yeah, what it looks like. 100%. Um, well, to, it's only coming it's soon. In, to South Africa in Q3, though. Oh, but so, I mean, yeah, so we'll, we'll at least yeah. have a better idea. No, no, before. we'll have reviews but to I, at least inform us. I am yeah. very curious to know what the price is in South Africa now because... Oh, my God. It will, $700 if it's is... starting at 600 that means it's going to be over 12K here. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Which, like, six, well, 600 700 is very affordable overseas, you know, yeah but <laughs> well look at the consoles the consoles are 500 dollars each yeah they are cost 12, gra 12 yeah. grand so now so you're looking at if, 13 14k for this device look yeah if you if this thing comes out and you're like hey it's 14 grand i'm like Oof, I, I don't that's know. starting if you want the the nice beefy boy you're looking at over yeah 15K I, I, I don't i don't becomes know like a no no i, I don't know why. how many you're gonna sell in our market why? sorry to say yeah yeah at least it will be cheaper overall than the Steam Deck because we get Steam Decks now locally, but they parallel imported and they're starting at like 16K at like <laughs> retailers. Yeah. And that is, please do not buy that. Like, do not support complete highway robbery like that. Could, that is crazy. Can you, can you only order the Steam Deck directly from Valve, for example? Yeah. So you can't order it from an Amazon? The, the, so there's some retailers in china and japan that like stock it like valve made deals with them because they can't do the distribution there mm. so i'm wondering if that's where they're coming from because maybe uh, someone has like a pipeline there yeah. but in other countries is all from steam you can't get it from okay. a best buy or because I, I was gonna say like generally speaking if you order from amazon uk you can get well-priced deals on hardware depending on what oh, you definitely order. yeah then you could import them here yeah. but you can't yeah unfortunately and I think I think the reason behind that is because Valve is taking such they're like eating so much shit on the hardware cost on this thing to keep it down. Like yeah. to put it on a retailer side and lose even more is like not but feasible I mean, for them. To be fair, Valve also printing money. <laughs> also <laughs> true. Apparently side. they made eleven million dollars on CSGO skins in one day the other day. So like what? <laughs> maybe money's not a deal, not a really big issue Yeah, for the, them. this is so. where I've, I look at Asus and I'm like yeah, you're selling hardware. Like I, you, I kind of get that you can't sell your your new fancy handheld at like five hundred dollars. You know, because where where else do you make up that money? You can't. Yeah. Well, yeah. just goes. We have a Steam summer sale, and hey, presto, we've made a billion <laughs> or something. We put out a new case in a Dota two, and hey, presto, a billion dollars. <laughs> Nuts! Eh? It really is crazy. We run an international. Uh, we take seventy five percent of the profits. Only twenty five percent go to the winners. Hey, presto, <laughs> we're rich again. <laughs> my goodness, oh, my Gabe God. Newell is literally the 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 Ducktail Scrooge McDuck. Diving into yeah, he's just diving into his yes in fucking Canada. Or doesn't he live in New Zealand now? Or something? I don't know. <laughs> uh, cool. Last last pieces of news. Look, all that said, I do want to see what this device looks like in the wild. Um, 
Mm. Let's see mm. what it looks like when it's. I'd in. love. To, I'd love to like handle one and just give it a mm. give it a go. Um, I'm just. You know, every time I talk about this device, I feel like people think I'm just shitting on it because, like, I have a Steam Deck. That's, like, not the case. I just, I mean, I was very critical of the Steam Deck before it came out. I was like, who the fuck's going to play on Linux? How are these games going to (laughs) work? This and that. Valve did all the fucking work they needed to to make that Mm. thing work, you know? And I just don't see another, I don't see a company like Asus doing that, Mm. considering all the desktop software I've used of theirs to make lights go red and green and how fucking (laughs) crap that can be. Like, are they going to make a client that will make it seamless for me to navigate Windows? I have my doubts. I don't know. We'll see. Mm, We'll see. Uh, Last pieces of news, uh, just to touch back on Gorilla quickly. Uh, Gorilla subtly confirms a new Horizon game as its studio director moves on. I mean, Mm. is anyone shocked? Anyone shocked by the fact that we're getting a third Horizon game? I, I think, think what was interesting here was that we got confirmation that they're doing a multiplayer game because I can't remember if that was just rumored. Oh, it was rumored or yeah. Listen, yeah. said it once, said it a million times. Make it feel like Monster Hunter in the Horizon universe. And I, th- I really think you have a winner. Um, I can well, see they're doing working. it. It's going to be a live service multiplayer game set in the Horizon universe. I bet that comes out before Horizon 3. I also like, think I bet so. that that's what they're mm-hmm. doing now. Yeah. Um, because there was also that comment a while back where I can't remember if it was Jim Ryan or Herman Holtz basically saying that by like 2025, they're going to have like 20 live service games out. And I bet that's one of them. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, I think Horizon 3 is like a end of PS5 life cycle game, mm. like in the last year of the PS5, like yeah. as a final hurrah to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then last piece of news this week. Uh, Armored Core Six is from software reboot the series for fans, source players, and newcomers alike. This shit so, looks so good. Oh new my trailer, God. the new trailer for Armored Core Six dropped with a release date of it's August, right? It's August twenty fifth, isn't it? It's, why can I not see the release date? It's wow, that is a you. I this think you linked the as, preview. Yeah, you my linked bad. The preview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is coming in August. Oh yeah, twenty fifth of August. Oh, and that's right. it's, it's man i've never man, played looks, a, i've never played an good, armored man. core game before but you best believe i'm i'm all in here my favorite Same. part of this trailer is that from software man their obsession with fire and cinders all yeah. the time the tra- the tra- <laughs> link the flame again this time as a robot <laughs> as a robot i'm like why <laughs> this, i this did read theme. in this preview though they said there is no poison swamp and it's like wow oh whatever man there will be a poison <laughs> swamp we know that how can robots be poisoned oh it's the, not going to be a poison swamp it's going to be a corrosion exactly swamp. it's yeah, going to be acid see, i see, mean they're getting I, around it i was saying this in our discord because good pal garth wrapped up alden ring and we we're talking about um is it the Lake of Rats or, or the Scarlet Lake? Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. remember thinking, because every From game has one of these bullshit lakes, every single one. But then in Elden Ring, when you go to Khalid, I'm like, oh, I can just get on torrent yeah, and I ride. I can just torrent around you. Yeah. Like, man, From, you've really like slipped. You know, gone are the days <laughs> of you making me suffer. And then I discovered the Lake of Rats. It's like, you, you assholes. <laughs> yeah. And that place is the fucking worst. The it is so worst. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I bet you there'll be one of them. Yeah. There has oh, to it's be. It's poison, it's corrosion. It's corrosion. It's so our, our mid-call, if you don't know, is like, you know, From existed before Dark Souls. I think this is one of their oldest franchises and it's all about mm. mechs. Um, Do you know I, there's 15 games in the series? That's crazy. That's <laughs> nuts. Yeah. But I mean, if... If they've taken... Because it's been a long time since they've done an Armored Core. If they've taken lessons from yeah. all their recent hits, whether it be Dark Souls, Elden Ring, or Sekiro, like, I'm very keen to see what this new rendition of Armored Core looks like. Because based on the trailer, mm-hmm. it looks like there's large-scale boss battles, there's dodging, lots of missiles and lasers, which is pretty cool. Very unlike a Dark Souls. I'm very keen to see how this game shakes out. Um Based off of uh, just reading the preview, there seems to be like they're being very adamant that this is not a Souls game. Mm. Um, So I don't think it's going to have a lot of the trappings of like upgrade currency disappears when you die or stuff Mm. like that. But I think 
based of of what I read, the things that have come over from the Souls franchise is like an aggressiveness to the combat mm. because I think previous entries were a lot slower, a lot more methodical, like a traditional yeah. sim like mech experience. This one is like, no, we want you to be in like the action. We want you to be dodging a lot. We want mm. you to be attacking a lot. So that speaks to we me. Want you... I kind of want to play that. Yeah. <laughs> we want you to rekindle I mean, the flame. Once to more. be fair, like <laughs> everyone, I think most people who have tried Elden Ring are going to give this a go because yeah. like, why the fuck not, you know? Mm. And they might come to and be like, okay, Armored Core is not for me. Yeah. Doesn't mean From Games aren't for me. It's just this specific one is not for me. Yeah. Um, but I had never had the interest to try Armored Core beforehand. This is the time that I'm like, cool, I'm into it. But I won't go in being like, Oh, if this is oh, not no. a Souls, like it yeah, shit. I'm like, out. No, no, it's just a different the, fucking game. The trailer itself yeah. just looks really cool. Like, it I, does. Yeah, it looks sick. It looks really, really fun. But there's a lot of like talk about like building up your mech, building different components, you know, mm. like if you have a different component on your leg that affects how you move, how you, you know, the speed at which you walk, your guns have different uh, um, firing rates, your actual core determines a lot of your ability. So mm. I think there's a lot more customization and a lot more simulation in that sense that um may or may not vibe just, with just people, like but dark it sounds souls cool. you put a summon sign on the floor and you can get your mech friends to join <laughs> i don't know if that's the just, thing <laughs> it just fucking like a titan fall parachutes <laughs> in essentially yeah so, i mean august isn't too far it's a few short months so yeah let's see what it's like um but on that note that is gaming news for this week